in a world gone topsy-turvy. It's nice to know that a few things remain constant. One is the beauty of mathematics, and another is that the dreamscapes of Lewis Carroll's world are a far better descriptor of this crazy planet than one might at first think. It seems that every day we go down a new rabbit hole. I'm Mark Burstein, one of the plenary speakers at the upcoming gathering for Gardner. When I was told that this talk would be a trailer of some kind, of course it had to begin in a world. So let me quickly introduce myself and my subjects, Martin and Lewis. Although the gathering has traditionally focused on Gardner's recreational math, puzzles, and magic, he was a great deal more than that. And if book sales are to be the measurement, his work on annotating the Alice books is arguably his most significant accomplishment. Our Martin and Lewis is not the comedy team of the 40s and 50s, rather the nexus of two polymaths, Martin Gardner and Lewis Carroll, fraternal twins born 82 years apart. In both cases, it could be said that they are known primarily for one thing, but both of them go far, far beyond that. And their intersection, which came in 1960, changed the world, or at least the world of the Alice books, for all time. Well, first let me answer the caterpillar. I have been collecting and writing about Carol most of my adult life, editing or contributing to more than 20 books on him or his works, serving as president of the Lewis Carroll Society of North America, editing its magazine, and simultaneously being a lifelong fan of Martin Gardner, with one book about him, A Bouquet for the Gardener, to my credit. I also updated, edited, and art directed the 150th anniversary deluxe edition of the annotated Alice, which came out in 2015. Enough said. Well, who was Lewis Carroll? The world knows him, of course, as the author of the two Alice books and the nonsense poem, The Hunting of the Snark. I don't wish to minimize that, of course, and we'll come back to it in a moment. But he was also a lecturer, or as we in America would say, professor of mathematics at Oxford, a writer with over 300 publications to his credit, that number includes pamphlets, and more than 60 of them in the worlds of math and logic, often under his real name, Charles Dodson. In recent years, there have been several books about his contributions to mathematics. But Carroll was also a ceaseless inventor of puzzles involving recreational math and wordplay, the divisor of a system for recording and accessing his 98,000 plus letters that is called by some one of the first databases, a master of the medium known as photography in its earliest days, a contributor to the field of cryptography, an inventor of the postage stamp case, magic tricks, the nixograph, an early adopter of all sorts of technology, such as this typewriter, a game designer, he's the inventor of doublets, now called word ladders, and the game of logic, and one could easily make the case for his being the first person in the world to go computer shopping. When he stopped by the home of Charles Babbage in January of 1867 to inquire if there was such a thing as an analytical engine to be had. Well, it was over a century before personal computers would become available, so he was a bit ahead of his time. Now Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and its mirror twin through the looking glass and what Alice found there are unquestionably the most quoted novels in existence and among the most translated, adapted, published, widely illustrated, studied, merchandised and exploited and celebrated, not to mention influential. Earlier this year, the World Cat named it, of all the novels written in English since the dawn of time, the number one most available in libraries all over the globe. Yes, Don Quixote is ahead of it, but that was originally written in Spanish. So let me read my previous sentence again, more slowly. <clears throat> the Alice books are unquestionably the most quoted, most widely illustrated, novels in existence and among the most translated, adapted, published, studied, merchandised, and exploited, and celebrated, not to mention influential. So, who was Martin Gardner? Well, the fact that you're watching this on the G4G channel probably means you know all about him, but let me recap a bit. Martin wrote or edited over a hundred books and countless articles, columns, and reviews. His first published work was a magic trick for a magazine called The Sphinx in May of 1930, when he was 15. His last was his posthumous autobiography of sorts, called Undiluted Hocus Pocus, in 2015, a publishing career of 85 years. Two of his books were novels, and one a book of humorous poems. 
but the rest, aside from collections of short stories, were nonfiction. Fifteen of them were collections of his mathematical games column from the Scientific American. He wrote nearly 300 columns for that magazine, wherein he introduced the world to, among other, dozens of other things, reptiles, pentominoes, aperiodic tiling, the game of life, and other cellular automata, the Soma Cube, Flexagons, MC Escher, Rubik's Cube, and the inimitable Dr. Matrix. But of all the people who appeared in these columns, the one who most often was mentioned was our old friend Lewis Carroll. The very incarnation of the word polymath, sorry, the pun is unavoidable, and a walking contradiction, Gardner, the 20th century's most famous explicator of mathematics for the masses, never took a math class beyond high school, or, despite living until 2010, ever used email or the internet. A famous skeptic and debunker of pseudoscience, he nevertheless declared himself to be a believer in God, based on faith alone. But the nexus I had mentioned earlier came about in 1960. His friend Clarkson Potter suggested that he might be interested in annotating Lewis Carroll's classics. At this point, Gardner was only marginally familiar with them, preferring his favorite, childhood favorites, the Oz books, and suggested that they get the British philosopher Bertrand Russell to do so. Russell declined, and Martin decided to do it himself. Although by no means the first book to include critical apparatus, such as footnotes, endnotes, and marginalia, his pioneering format, extensive research, keen judgment, and generous commentary provided readers with contexts, comparisons, alternatives, and explanations, entertaining and enlightening readers on a scale never before available, and incidentally paving the way for a host of other annotated editions of canonical works. And this was long before anything but typewritten postal letters, phone calls, and libraries were sources of information, and Google was just a very large number. Well, Gardner himself did a few other annotated books, but the annotated Alice forever changed the landscape of the Alice books. Up to this time, they were considered to be cute and somewhat silly tales for children and had attracted almost no scholarly or academic notice. The thought of adults reading one would be akin to finding a <gasps> comic book in their hands. But in the years following Gardner's demonstration, of their philosophical depths, transcendent wordplay, and mathematical and logical profundities, they have not only become enormously popular with readers of all ages, but have attracted a minor industry of scholarly, and it must be admitted occasionally pseudo-scholarly, works. But as the late director Sir Jonathan Miller expressed it, these were books about children, not for them. The Annotated Alice, which has sold over a million copies in 11 languages, has had several formal editions. Martin never stopped annotating. Many of his notes became part of the edition published five years after his death. There really is too much to say about these twin minds separated by eight decades, and I look forward to presenting The Literary Englishman and the Scientific American at the next gathering. Now, Scientific American started publication in 1845 as a weekly newspaper. Charlie Dodson was 13. It's not known if he ever saw a copy of the magazine, but under his nom de plume, he's been in it hundreds of times in the following years. But there may be more to the gardner Carroll connection. This is an ambigram devised by Scott Kim for my bouquet for the Gardner book. Turn it upside down. Hmm. Well, stay well, and I hope to see you in a better world. Thank you.